Hello everyone, it is me, Mr. Sneaky, and we're going to be going over day two. What's been going over, you know, what's been happening in Super Server 1. We've covered all of day one. If you're looking for day one footage, just go back. I've done three big videos over basically the course of that day. As you can see in day two, this is what's basically occurred. So we've basically moved up to the bear. As you can see, the, the alliance as I've slept have been able to build. And during this time, obviously, it is just two, I think it's two alliances versus one. While down in the TA side where it's really big, you've got more and more alliances emerging. So at the top side, I think you have GOD and another alliance on its way. So just stay tuned for all of the action, everything you're going to need to know about what's going on on Super Server 1 here with me, Mr. Sneaky. Hello everyone. So yes, we are going over more day two footage here. I'm going to give you guys briefly or a good, you know, little introduction of what's been going on. I know if you've been covering or watching the day two videos, you've been enjoying the gameplay and enjoying the commentary videos, which is what I've been aiming to do. But obviously, some people might not understand, you know, the teams, they might not understand what's going on. So while this is in the background currently of some amazing open field gameplay by myself, as you can see, my range gameplay um, and artifact usage, obviously, when I'm fighting here in this little murder ball. We're going to go over, obviously, what's, what's the game plan, what's been happening over day two. And hopefully, again, over these few videos that I'm going to cover over day two, again, like I did in day one, you're going to have, obviously, a nice understanding and good, you know, focus of information and, you know, what's going on, right? And it's, it's good to know what's going on because you can enjoy the, the wars. And obviously, I've been streaming it as well on the Discord channel. So it's been a really fun time. Um, so at the moment you have obviously the TM and TA Alliance. This is both TA if you want to call it from um, the last season in Super Server 1. They're obviously split because of the uh, alliance requirements of member limit. You know, you can't have all 200 members in one. So they have to split up, which is fine. You also have their two allies, which is the GRZ and the UEH, right? So these are the two allies that have banded with them. And then... On top of that, then you have the enemies, right? And this is literally everyone else in the like in the kingdom. So you have all of server five and server six. This includes BDL, IDL, GOD. You've got server four, which is SS11. Um, I think they've changed them a lot. There's like SS10 as well. You've got NT45 there. Um, what else? You have another alliance. I keep forgetting because I don't really see them too much because they fight on the TA side, unfortunately. But it's basically a massive like 6v3 almost or like 4v1 fight if you want to call it in that regard. So it's been a really fun, fun experience. So as you can see, the SS11 side from day one to day two have been basically trying and trying to buy their time. For the GOD squad, as you can see, that just passed on screen to build that fortress, right? Being able to build that fortress there allows them to be able to support in the open field a lot more efficiently. So on screen, what the GRZ was doing was obviously trying to build their fortress against them. So this fortress is just below the ramp that you guys could see on the map, just prior to those screens below. You're going to see the ramp that I'm talking about again in a moment anyway. But this fortress here is trying to be built and obviously the massive S4, S5, 6 alliances cannot allow this to be built, right? If it's, it's built now, this allows the GRZ to um, have members there to build flags and to cause really big problems with being able to, you know, push troops here now really easily by teleporting their castles, right? So this is not something that needs to ha uh, go down in their books. So the TM side is obviously trying to protect and defend the GRZ fortress from everyone on screen. While the GRZ guys are obviously trying to defend themselves and build that fortress. So that is what is going on on screen right now. It's some great open field tactics and great, you know, on the fly flexibility on, you know, trying to be aggressive and push forward to see what's been going on. In response to this, obviously, we were wondering what's been going on with servers five and six from day one. So during day one, Obviously, you got to remember these guys are all the way over at Burning Lands. They're on the other side of the map, so they've got quite a way to get to here. So what they've had to do is capture the pass one, 
and then move into the next lap area which is I believe like Forgotten Lands and then from Forgotten Lands they can take that pass and then they jumped by putting a core fortress right next to the next pass building it capping it and by doing this they're able to hop from region to region to region and eventually over time they're able to build the core fortress now in this zone because they're going to be able to control one of the four passes that are located in the Vula on the right side so that is basically what server five six have been doing and obviously during that time they've been focusing more on the ta side which is the bdl alliance and nt45 and you'll see that later on in this video and if not in the tomorrow's video and the day two footage because there's a lot of footage covered during day two and it's been pretty much the same at the moment with day three but at the moment you can see there's some great open field combat right now we have almost the remnants of the fight that's just occurred on screen you can see that the jazz members and the tm members have been able to qu quickly just defend this small skirmish fight from the nt45 push but as you can see there's a load more troops now converging together on that north side and they're aiming to push straight through as one unit again to try and penetrate through this tm defense and get to those builders and start destroying that fortress right that is the key to the nt45 and bdl's like game plan right now they need to get this fortress down so that is what you can see on screen obviously the marches are very obviously um, standard now if you've not known what what to run you can see you see a lot of the wall deers and atheist combos or Waldir and Alloween combos. Basically, these two combos are really good if you're a free to play player with all the epics. It means you can go with Alloween if you want a bit more of a tankier and you know supportive match because of the health buffs you get through Alloween plus the slowing effects and continuous damage that you can ensnare them with. But if you want all the damage that's capable, Atheus is a better choice. He does only do single target damage similar to Alloween but he's more single target damage burst and he gives you guys that rage generation and some healing which is really nice with the shielding of wild deer so it's a very great synergy that people are sleeping on but you can be used um, if you've got you know a bit more to, for your arsenal you've spent a little bit of money obviously you can run lilia people are running lilia and atheus as well with then valen and wild deer if you have valen and if not, you can run, you know, the big, big comp, which is Lilia Valen together. If you've got both, that is the strongest mage composition right now. Um, but there is a lot of different things on the field. You see, there's some fears right there. So you can run a fear and atheist combo as well. That's been very popular. A fear and Craig with Wilderberg and running the you know wyvern riders that's been really popular as well and if you've been a really really good cavalry player i've seen some insane reports by a player from called c he's been able to do 123 rounds of battle in one you know sitting with a cavalry march being able to farm kill over you know 123 tiles is insane in one report and when you uh, when you got to see it you'll be just as surprised as me but that'll be later on in another video you know i don't want to get too carried away but it just showcases you know each of the unit types once you learn how good they are and you master what they're really really good with their you know specialities you can get some insane merits like and you can get some insane kills so on the screen right now, we're going to zoom in and this is what we was talking about, the TM building his fortress here as well with a flag or keep, shall I say, to the right of it. And if this keep gets built, it's going to be very scary for the, obviously the IDL and BDL alliances with NT45 and S11. So this is four alliances pushing together now, trying with with god and burning on screen as you can see the strongest player at the time uh, i think he was 72 million while ghost was like 69 million at the time but this is now the big fight where they're trying to succumb and push the tm forces out they've basically been able to arrive with everyone now they've got everyone in a good murder ball and you can see they're pushing together in two separate areas but they're still in a nice tight group right and this is what you need to notice the thing is with aoe damage people get a bit scared of aoe obviously it is a little bit terrifying with the artifact damage and that's the one you do need to be worried of 
but when it comes to the actual rally or should i say the actual aoe damage of say Waldir's skill it does 15 percent less damage per unit hit remember so the more units hit if you're not the primary target the shrapnel damage isn't as severe as you think right so you can see here i'm trying to run the front line on the screen you have obviously announcements through discord as well as in game if you don't have a discord channel for your alliance that is a really big tip on this video on screen that you could see just it just allows members that are maybe free and they don't know to get quick pop up on the discord channel and you know they'll know to get out right but as you can see the ss11 are doing an insane job right here with god pushing through together and god burning doing a fantastic job with his troops and management skills here if you've been watching his troops very carefully he's been able to use his infantry or his cavalry really well to go into certain units and then use his free remaining range units which was a double mage and archer composition as you can see on screen it just melted through people and it allowed them to reclaim and retake this area which was a fantastic job and a great great you know victory for the ss11 and server four five and six side of the fight right so obviously the fight is not over they're trying to on the tm side include myself once my troops return go back in and fight but you can see i'm running low on power i'm at only at 13.6 so my healing does need to go through and a lot of people get scared of the healing but with the merit system in the game and obviously with a little bit of the resource healing if you've been farming during your downtime which i've been doing even though my mana's low i do my mana right at the end of the day you do get to heal your troops back really fast so for example on stream it hit around i think i was about five days and about 17 hours worth of healing so it's going to take a long time obviously through free healing but as soon as i popped my merits and bought some hospital bundles and you know free healed around 200 300 000 units and then next minute i'm only at two days and then to the next day when i woke up i bought some more and next minute i was only at one day you know and i could finish the last little bit of resource healing if i really wanted to which i did do and it allowed me to within two days not even you know get back up full strength and come back into the fighting and that's someone with low troop count so imagine if you're a player with a decent amount of troops you know your account has been playing for a long time and you're gonna have about 300 400 000 troops this is gonna be a really fun way of fighting because obviously you're gonna be able to fight over a long period of time and obviously you're gonna get troops back as you you know progressing through the days so i've been enjoying the combat system i hope you guys have been enjoying the combat systems as well as well as the fights that's on screen and obviously my thoughts and commentary that's involved as you see the bdl and geodity side are doing a fantastic job here securing now the last little area the closing off the entrance as you can see so no one can get through if no one can get through there can be no builders but on the top right if you can just picture it there's a little flank by another tm member but those troops could be dying to themselves just because obviously if you're going in 1v10 that tank's gonna kill that one unfortunately so just pay attention to what you're doing and make sure your troops unless you know obviously you're a whale or something and you're capable of doing it you know try and pay attention to what you're doing and what everyone else is doing and you do do and, I, and as you can see get merits and you do get kills if you play together right so here's a little push again from the tm side trying to secure the last bit of that fight so obviously as we saw from the progression the bdl did come with god and idl to the rescue of s11 and they pushed them back however as you can see the tm alliances are very close by because of the flags that they've already been able to build all the way up to here so they're able to replenish and refresh their troops and apply constant pressure to the god side and as you can see burning is under mass amounts of aoe from artifacts and pressure from multiple troops here obviously he's gaining a load of stamina for his alliance since multiple people are trying to target him however if the tm alliance kill him and continue to attack through and kill everyone else without you know removing or losing their combat um timer 
then it doesn't matter for him, you know, he he's lost out on what he was trying to gain for his alliance. And as you can see, the TM alliance here now are pushing to, through together, doing a fantastic job with the cavalry and infantry front line of Semi and Demore here, doing, like I say, a great job creating that bit of space for the TM Alliance to push together and now reclaim that entrance pocket on the bottom left corner of the screen and now push through to try and reclaim. They've got a flank on the right side that I did say they need to be careful of if it was just only one member, but you can see it was multiple in a small murder ball being able to push now through and provide extra support now creating even more more space allowing the members on the left side to you know creep forward and create that nice nice amount of closure almost like a moon shape as you can see that's slowly creating on in the area here and they're closing the area down making sure no one's able to enter and they're protecting these builders fantastically from the tm side massive aoe's with acid breath and time bomb from the lilia and the aloe at the bottom of the screen hitting multiple units you can see on the top right they need to leave otherwise the physical defense that they're reducing by is gonna absolutely shred them when the next rotation of shadow blades comes through as you just saw there on the top left from the canara and oh my god and on you can see the s11 are coming through on the top left flank here trying to help sandwich almost this tm push however i don't believe it's going to be enough because tm have already dealt with the bdl and god side on the right so now they can now refocus their troops and push on this far left top corner and as you can see this ss11 squad is taking considerable damage from the tm side that is actually only around seven marches here the big aoe and aoe artifacts that's being combined absolutely decimating this murder ball at the top right corner they do need to stay tight but they need to spread out or split up into two smaller balls so it means everyone has to either choose left or right you know you need to give them an option you can't always just be in one big zone we can see more ss11 members teleporting in to try and create support more members are entering this murder ball trying to punch through the more here as well as the other members of the tm side However, that is going to be the ending of the video. I know you've enjoyed the commentary so far. And if you want more day two videos, obviously subscribe to the channel. Hit the like and comment below for more daily Call of Dragons videos with me, Mr. Sneaky. But until then, next time, peace out, guys.